Hey guys, and it's time for a discussion on one of the greatest films of all time, which is Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in America from 1984. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will know the story, but for some that don't, this film was ripped to shreds when it first came out. It was obviously, there was so much footage. Um, Leone originally wanted it split into two films. The studio convinced him to uh, cut the film to shreds and there was loads of non-linear stuff in the film and they decided to put it in without Leone's consent in order so um, chronological order and then release the film now the strange thing about it is that version of Once Upon a Time in America the two hours 19 minutes cut was slated panned you know dissed destroyed but then of course once we actually saw uh, Leone's original vision is viewed as one of the greatest films of all time. Now that's always blown me away, the fact that you can release what the film and cut it to shreds and put it into chronological order and it can be one of the worst films. And then you, as soon as you see it how it's supposed to be, it's one of the greatest films of all time. And Once Upon a Time in America is indeed, I say it with all sincerity in my heart, one of the greatest films ever made. It's a film that you will always have a different experience with because you're watching it from a different time in your life and that is essentially what the film's about. It's about the, the passing of time. It's about memories. It tells the story of Robert De Niro's gangster noodles. We see him as a kid but also as an adult. And he's, he's kind of reminiscing and looking back on his life and we get to see his rise into crime and obviously how it all went wrong. And the crazy thing about Once Upon a Time in America is the, the, the incredible beauty that it holds on to throughout. So as you know, only probably achieved something that's never been done before and never will be again with these terrible gangsters. But somehow the film is just delivered in such a beautiful way where you, you find the film lyrical and wonderful and exquisite whilst we're watching such disgraceful characters. It's a gangster film that tries to look at the human heart, you know, the fact that we're all bad in some ways and we get into these situations, would we have done the same as Noodles, etc. And it's, it's things like that, it's, we, we're given a just enough by Leone to relate to Noodles, but still judge his crimes. It's also a story of friendship between Noodles and James Wood's character in the film, Max, and there's some fascinating scenes in this where the two butt heads and the two discuss their different views on the gangster life. Max is, is going incredibly far and Max just wants it all but he wants to take Noodles with him and they've been friends since they were kids and we see them as kids but Noodles is seeing a Max go down a road where he's, t he's taking too many chances just for the sake of it and the whole thing is imploding in on itself. That's a fascinating dynamic. I think Robert De Niro and James Woods really have an electric chemistry in this. You know, you're on the edge, you're on tent hooks whenever they're speaking to each other. It's uh, edge of your seat stuff because it's who's going to buckle first and who is, who's the real one to blame. You know, should Noodles be bl to blame for leading him on and getting him into it, or is Max just completely out of control and he's he's responsible for the downfall of these gangsters. And at its core, Once Upon a Time in America is also a very tragic love story between Noodles and Deborah, played by Elizabeth McGovern as an adult and Jennifer Connelly as a child. The scenes between Jennifer Connelly and young Noodles, played by Scott Tyler, are incredibly playful um, and incredibly sweet and incredibly interesting. Because the strange thing about Once Upon a Time in America is these kids, it's all play to them um, when they're when they're the gangsters um, as kids when they want to get into that. So there's a light-hearted feeling to it, but there is still that sense of innocence, and obviously that innocence is lost. The film is about that corrupting influence of being a gangster, where you can't live a normal life from that point. You 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 start to think you're entitled to things. You start to think that women owe you things. You start to think that you're above everything. So it really is a film that embraces grey areas and embraces um, the flawed nature of humanity and it makes you watch and experience flawed people and 
it just gives you them in all their uncompromising horrible glory but you end up feeling some sympathy because the film is so un uncompromising because it's so honest he's got such a messed up view of love that all he's ever known is seeing women as prizes anyway so he he thinks it is love that he sees her as a prize and he can't understand how she can't you know he gives her an amazing date he gives her such a romantic night he gives her this and that but she wants a person you know <laughs> he's just uh, now become a caricature and 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 he doesn't realize that he's made a deborah that you know he doesn't really want deborah he wants the idea of deborah and that's the kind of messed up uh kind of crack through the middle of their relationship which is fascinating because there is some unfulfilled love there and there's lots of regret there and it's a film about regret it's a film about mistakes it's a film about gray areas you know noodles as an old man we almost see that that humanity that he should have had with deborah when he was younger comes through in in a in a way but he knows how much he's done wrong so much regret behind robert de niro's eyes de niro delivers so well in the different stages of noodles life with his facial expressions i think robert de niro might be the best actor of all time for facial expressions where you just see a thousand emotions going on behind the eyes it's stunning there's just so much unfulfilled um romance there and so much tension in that scene and so much genuinity in that scene but so much also ice cold pain you know the pain that they never were able to fall in love because of him and that life he chose and of course the incredible score by Ennio Morricone is one of the greatest scores of all time it is heartbreaking it is bittersweet it is melancholy it just drives home every emotion it's so relevant to the film and there are just moments in this where that main theme starts up where you're just heartbroken you know it's uh that theme basically says everything once upon a time in america wants to say it's just so much longing in that theme you know so much yearning you know because it just creates such a mood such a wispy such a dreamlike tone leone is really experimental in this you know it's such a slow paced film there are so many shots that linger there are so many shots that um close-ups and uh strange camera movements which kind of are chosen in a way to unfold like a dream you know at times in this film it does unfold like a dream it, 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 there is some randomness to the film that's why putting it in chronological order really doesn't work there needs to be that unpredictability in once upon a time in america because it, it's about shifting between different emotions and moods and mindsets is about that and the only dizzying shots do that they, they leave you disorientated at times he's playing with your mind he's playing with your um triggers he's playing with um what you know and what you don't know um of the story but then there are just long sections of the film that are incredibly beautiful and incredibly relaxing um so the only reader really shift into different gears throughout the film it really is a film full of different approaches to direction hospital america is one of the purest examples of a director's vision needs to be fulfilled a director's vision is sometimes the best you know in this in this instance the director's vision was such it came from his heart so much you know and i liken it to films such as fanny and alexander by Ingmar bergman which also did a discussion about you got you know you can't mess around with that sort of vision because when a director comes up to you and goes right i'm doing five hours i'm doing five hours i'm doing this i'm doing that you can't then compromise you know certain films you cannot compromise and once more time in america is one of them you're not making goodfellas you're not making you know casino you're not even making the godfather you know the godfather is quite slow and contemplative but it's nowhere near as human and a melancholy and bittersweet as once upon a time in america fascinating film to watch as time goes on because as you age and age the melancholy feelings become even more bittersweet you, you normally get these sorts of feelings from films like green mile or shawshank redemption where there's good at the heart there's real good you know and you get it in other films and you feel that bittersweet feeling and you feel a lot once upon a time in america there's not good at the heart of of this film there isn't and there isn't good at the heart 
there's ego, there's betrayal, there's violence, there's greed. But there's incredible humanity at the same time. There's incredible beauty, there's incredible honesty, there's incredible grey areas, there's incredible feats of filmmaking. There's a Robert De Niro, possibly his best performance of all time. That's at the heart of it. I think it's his most quiet, it's his most reserved, it's his most fascinating. This character is so complicated, but it's Noodle's complications which make him so fascinating to watch. Wondering what he's thinking makes him so fascinating to watch. Seeing those little moments where he regrets what he did and talks about what he did, or, and seeing those moments where he is being incredibly cold and horrible, like it's just incredible to watch as an honest depiction of this human being and I think James Wood's performance is up there as well is a little less um, dimension because it's just he's basically horrible and he is fully an ego but James Wood's incredibly charismatic actor he has several wonderful moments very memorable in the film and everyone else is very memorable but it really is of course Robert De Niro's film he's the the character at the core he's the one tracing together the steps and we go along with him but everyone else packs him up incredibly well it is just an incredible piece of work it, it's a film that leaves you absolutely stunned have you seen Once More Time in America if you haven't check it out right now let me know let's talk about it in the comments check out another discussion on the screen now of a similar film or well, a similar director's vision you know a long you know crazy vision um, Fanny and Alexander by Imar Bergman check out my discussion of that and subscribe for more videos like this on this channel see you guys next time